Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So first off, <clears throat> this is not a video about uh, Hurricane Dorian. Okay, I made a live stream about that yesterday, so you could go check that out. Uh, it's pretty informative. It may be a little bit long, but it's pretty informative. It gives you a nice update on what's uh, what was happening. Um, the things probably changed, uh, you know, at this point. Uh, so, you know, you need to keep updated with that, but uh, today's video is going to be a long-range uh, forecast, just the weather pattern, and in fact, the first frost for some people, possibly. <clears throat> There's been already frost advisories issued for northwestern Maine, and uh, that, that was a couple, I think that was actually last night. Sorry about that. Last night, so that is <clears throat> relatively fresh. And yeah, so consider subscribing to this channel. Consider liking this video. It really means a lot. Or I really like that. Also, I have one more thing to say. Quickly mention. Uh, please listen up to this. I mean, please listen up. If you were, would be interested in uh, some seeds, I have a lot of seeds from Four O'Clocks. These flowers, and I'm planning on maybe possibly selling them to some of you guys if you want them. Uh, leave a comment in the description box below, or if you would like some merch, leave that as well. Um, but yeah, uh, so. Also, I apologize if I sound a little bit drowsy in this video. Um, I am a little bit tired, but that is because it is late at night and this is actually getting pre-recorded. But you know, I'm not. It's not that super late. I'm not forcing myself <clears throat> to do this. It's just I apologize if I yawn at least once or twice. And uh, if you look at the map, you can see there's a 540 thickness line. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it, but I sure can. <laughs> and it says right there 540, and it's a different color. Notice that all of these have different numbers, but they're not different colors. <clears throat> well, why is that? Well, this is uh, a special number because that is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That marks it, the 540 thickness line, which is right there. And what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> wherever it's 32 degrees, if you know your Fahrenheit, that is where water freezes, and that's so precip could turn to snow, or frost could occur if there's a prolonged area or time under uh, this 540 line. <clears throat> And that's what you need to know. And you can see that if you put this into motion, it gets it gets pretty darn close to uh, Maine right there. You can see Maine's right there, and 540's right there. And I want, I want to explain this to you. Usually, <coughs> even though the line is up here, uh, sometimes uh, we see the frost advisories as far south as, you know, 200, 300 miles down. <coughs> because that is uh, where scattered frost could occur all the way down to there almost never and uh, that is you know that's pretty significant especially since it's like the first frost of the year so anything that's growing you might have to protect they want to alert you on it uh, and, you know that's why the frost advisories are only in the spring and fall because during the winter they would have to be doing that every day a frost advisory but you know it just doesn't make sense to do so they only do at the beginning and the end of the season to alert you on what's to come. Um, we look at hour 30, you can see Hurricane Dorian pummeling, but that's not what we're focusing on. We're focusing on the U.S. Uh, <clears throat> climate. Uh, I mean, yeah, I know you, Dorian's going to impact the U.S., don't get me wrong, but let's just focus on other regions. <clears throat> you can see a cold front pushing through the Northeast, uh, which, uh, may, you know, which uh, initiates this hurricane to uh, make that turn. And uh, you can see there's actually a pretty big system right there uh, across the plains on, um, on on Tuesday. This would be affecting much of Wisconsin, much of Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Michigan. Pretty powerful, actually. And this moves up into the further in Canada, <clears throat> the Newfoundland and Labrador area. And you can see on the backside there'd actually be uh, there'd actually be snow uh, since the 540 is over that. <clears throat> so that that would be interesting if it was over you know us, but you know it's not. And uh, we can see then Hurricane Dory making its way up the, the southwest, uh, possibly an influx of moisture. You can see right there uh, of possibly pre precip across the west. You know nothing too intense, but there we have it. Notice how also that this hurricane or tropical storm at this point tough to say. Um, this model shows it as being a clear hurricane, but you can see possibly rain for the northeast and midwest. <laughs> uh, Boston, I meant to say, and also possibly coming a snowstorm for portions of Canada, which is always interesting. <clears throat> so after that, though, after that hurricane, notice how we see a blast of cooler air, and we actually, <clears throat> if you were to look at this, uh, there's actually a little bit of snow right there, and that, that's also <laughs> really interesting since it's, uh, that probably won't happen, but again, um, this is very far out, but you can see how powerful this is, and this actually brings the blue line way into Maine, or touching Maine. <clears throat> which at this point I would assume that the frosts are extending through uh, much of northeast and we have another system that pushes the chilly air out I mean this thing is one powerful system right there look at that uh, very powerful this would be like a uh, winter 
<clears throat> winter, fall, like storm, and you can see uh, very, very well defined characteristics. If I were to draw this out, you can see the low pressure, low pressure right there. The winds are spinning uh, counterclockwise, <clears throat> and it's also erupting this cold front, which the winds are pushing like this. And from the south, most likely a high pressure. <clears throat> we have one right here, probably a second one somewhere down in this region, pushing winds like this, and that creates convergence. And these severe thunderstorms could erupt along this. And uh, right here, we have the warm front and a very, very well-defined system, a very nice fall system. But look what happens behind it. In front of it, yes, it brings in quite a bit of warm air. And you can see that because it pushes that up. If we were to look at the two-meter temperature anomalies, it would be it would be orange. And yeah, I was right about that. Pretty easy to see. Um, it's not a case of being, you know, it's not a question of being right or wrong. It's just being of... Uh, showing what the data uh, models are showing and you can see all uh, you can see, uh again the system moves through brings in again chilly air behind it and this one brings it into more minnesota area not necessarily the northeast holds off with that for a little bit look um this would definitely be uh frost for some of these areas uh, or at least frost advisories. Let's look at the two meter temperature shaded. I think they, okay, yeah, they show awfully darn close temperatures. Look at that, 38, 36, 39. That's September 12th. So uh, if we were to look at the two meter temperature anomalies, again, very below average with this. And let's continue going into the MSLP and precip. Ew. <clears throat> so we know that it's that big storm. Ew. And uh, the west staying mainly dry during this, but it kind of originates from the west. Though we see another eruption of. A precip along this high pressure which digs down after that storm we could see a little bit of a precip and then we get into more of a calm pattern in terms of less precip and possibly more warmer air I mean you can see this if you were to look at the temperature anomaly this would not show blues that awfully much like it did previously as yes, quite a bit actually a little in areas but the south and the west are still warm and I think some of these models are overdoing the warmth and this is what we get uh, with the GFS up to 324 with the newest model run. Let's see what the previous one said. At this time, uh, I had a pretty high pressure here, here which uh, which probably would indicate warm temperatures in the south and cooler temperatures up here. here and then uh, if we were to make this load, which sometimes it has problems doing so, uh, you could see maybe another blast of chilly air. But I'm, I'm curious about this to see. I think this would mean rather warm temperatures for this area based on uh, the characteristics of high pressures. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you can see gorgeous, <laughs> a gorgeous outline of where the hot, warm temperatures are going to be while it's pretty chilly to the northwest. That's what we call a baroclinic zone between two air masses, a warm air mass and a cool air mass. It's a baroclinic zone. <clears throat> I haven't checked the Climate Prediction Center uh, in a while, so I want to see what they're showing for the 8 to 14 day outlook. So this is what I'm uh, showing of what I'm seeing myself. And that seems about right, uh, maybe a little bit overdone, uh, but from around the September 9th through the 15th, we could be looking at some above average precip. It doesn't see, uh, temperature, sorry, it doesn't seem like it will be really cold or any more cold outbreaks of air. And you may be wondering, where, well, or where are they? I haven't gotten one yet. <clears throat> well, if you had any pleasant weather, pleasant weather, because usually these chills bring pleasant weather. If you haven't, if you have had any uh, pleasant weather in the past couple of days, then you've got hit by the chilly air. And if you were to look at the anomalies, it's been pr rather pretty chilly. Uh, let's look at the uh, precip. Yeah, you can see um, also probably along that very clinic zone, cold air up here, warm air down here, so it's a little bit of less precip. Uh, let's look at the 6 to 10 day outlook. Also new to me, haven't looked at it yet. I'm still showing some of that air, especially in center towards the northeast where we could be seeing those frosts, frost advisories, and a little bit warmer to the south. You can notice how also the west gets catches a break from this. It's more in a neutral pattern. And precip again, uh, more of this pattern, just a little bit more amplified. So <clears throat> very, very nice, very interesting uh, weather. I would also quickly like to look at the three to four week outlook with you guys. You know, check this out, see how it's going. <clears throat> so let's see what they're showing okay yeah i would imagine they would be showing more warmer temperatures uh, throughout this time period as the 8 to 14 is showing some warm <laughs> temperatures and this was not this was recently updated yeah august 30th so two days ago and you can see they're showing just a marginal area of below average precip and <clears throat> a uh, good chunk i would say 85 75 percent of the country and above average 80 percent of the country and above average uh pre uh temperature chances which would be nice, you know. Many of the farmers could possibly finish up their growing season with the warmer air, since again, we, we they got them in very late, especially. Be, I mean, mainly because of the torrential rain in the springtime, definitely taking a toll.
so that is basically it. Um, I, uh, you know, I went through most of the things I wanted to show you. <clears throat> I know, like, right, I only show you one model, but I sh then I show you kind of the average of the Climate Prediction Center and what they're showing. I could show you the European model still. <clears throat> this is the 500 millibar. <clears throat> so basically shows us where the ridges and the highs are. Or at ridges and the troughs, and right now, yeah, you can see they're showing some cooler air for the first next couple of days. Uh, new, uh, uh, some troughs, some cooler air, but then we get into more of a warming pattern. You can see by that ridge if you're to look at the two meter temperature anomaly, which isn't with this. I can show it on a different website, but I'm not going to pull that up at this point. Uh, you can see there's a high pressure. Uh, I mean, it's not drawn out right there, but <clears throat> if this was right there, it would be just spinning this worm here from the southwest desert southwest. It would migrate all the way, and it's just kind of be like a ring of fire pattern, but in the fall. So that's also pretty interesting what the European is showing. But generally, a warming trend towards the later we go in the forecast. This is the GEFS ensembles. Again, first starting off by showing some of that cooler air. This could, uh, you know, low again right there. Look. A nice dip in a jet stream, a nice trough, especially centered across the northeast. But then you can see that ridge developing, or at least tries to get more, maybe more zonal. And then, um, uh, you know, a, 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 again, a possible ridge. So uh, interesting, but also pretty typical. But uh, still, I think September will end up being rather on a chilly side, unless, you know, things definitely go as or things possibly go askew. Uh, we'll have to see anyway. But thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.